one hitter as top-ranked Michigan beat the Falcons in Bowling Green last week. Junior pitcher Jenny Ritter moved into sole possession at third place on the all-time strikeout list with 471 as Michigan won its 32nd straight game. Second inning, Michigan's Laura Lynn Wilson, that K, her fourth of the first five batters she faced, but trouble early with two on in the second. Abby Ruff will plate two. It's Hawkeyes two and Michigan zip. Next batter is Mindy Heidgerkin. She singles home Ruff as the throw not in time, and the Hawkeyes on top, three to nothing. Two batters later, it's Summer Downs. Summer Downs goes yard. 5-0 Hawkeyes, number one in that winning streak. Oh, they're in jeopardy. Bottom of the second, one-on-one -on -one out. Grace Lutelli to center field, deep back, and it's gone. 5-2 Iowa, Lutelli's eighth of the year. Now, the Wolverines brought in Jenny Ritter, in, and Ritter faced 16 batters. She retired them all. She struck out seven. She was dominant, but Michigan, the Wolverines, could generate no more offense and Iowa gets the 5-2 upset of number one. Saturday, temperatures in the 30s, wind gusts up to 40 miles per hour. It was cold, it was uncomfortable, and yes, you needed a hat. Top of the first, runner on first, Ali Giampolo, the bunt. Now we slowed this one down as well, and this call also wrong. She was safe, assistant coach Bonnie Thole, excuse me, sir, but I think that call was incorrect, and I respectfully disagree with your assessment or something like that. Next batter, one out, runner on second. Jessica Merchant knocks in Tiffany Haas to give Michigan the one nothing lead. Ritter pitching again. Kylie Murray up for Iowa. And off Ritter, Murray, a solo shot, back and gone. It's a 1-1 ball game. Top of the third now, one on two outs. Nicole Motika. That drive towards the Pines and into the Pines. Motika, six of the year. Michigan takes a 3-1 lead. And Ritter made it stand. She struck out the side in the third and totaled 10 Ks in all. We move ahead to the six. Runner on second for Michigan. Two outs for Tiffany Haas. Grounder to short. This will be another bang-bang play. And once again, Coach Thole with an exchange of ideas. Her idea differs from his idea. Seventh inning, Wolverines still on top. Three to one. Ritter, two outs. The strikeout ends it. And the Wolverines' new winning streak is at one games. We had to come back tougher than we were Friday, and then even tougher on top of that because it was so cold. So I think that just kind of shows what team that we have and um, lets us know how tough we can be for the rest of the season. Okay, Sunday, the wind's still blowing, but it's 20 degrees warmer, and that is nice. Illinois in town, bottom of the first. Up. Tiffany Haas launches a rocket to center. That bomb, this team's 50th, tying the team single season record with half the season still to come. Still in the first inning, four batters later, runner on third, two outs, that's an error. Off Motika's bat, Merchant scores, it's 2-1 Michigan. Next batter, Grace Lutelli, and that is a base hit. Motika will score on that. Lutelli on the throw, sneaks down to second. She's safe, it's 3-1 Michigan. Top of the third now, bases loaded, two outs. This is sloppy play, and it starts with a wild pitch. Then you mix in a little bit of this, and next thing you know, two unearned runs score. Carol Hutchins, head coach of the Wolverines. Yes, she's upset. Bottom of the third, 3-3, Nicole Motika. That's the record breaker, home run number 51 on the year for the team. Motika's seventh, it's 4-3 Michigan. Two batters later, Stephanie Burkhaw deep to center field. Rachel Cardi backs up and comes up empty. Second for Burkaw, and that record grows. It's 5-3 Michigan. Bottom six now, it's 6-3 Michigan. Runners on second and third, one out. Tiffany Haas, the double to right. Burkaw and Teschler score. It's 8-3 Wolverines, done deal, right? Well, top of the seventh, 8-4 now. Two outs, two on for Shannon Diller, who just reaches out and goes yard. Three run shot, it's 8-7 Wolverines. Next batter, two outs, Ritter with the K. That ends it. Nice framing there. Ritter has worked 19 and a third straight innings through the weekend. Okay, game two on Sunday. Michigan by rule the visitor. Top two, one on, two outs for Burkaw. Her drive deep to right, plates Motika, and the Wolverines on top, one to nothing. Next batter, Becky Marks. This is an absolute rope, and it sneaks past Cordy all the way to the wall. It's two nothing, Wolverines. Marks gets a double. Laura Lynn Wilson got rocked on Friday and came back with a vengeance on Sunday. She threw a one-hit shutout. One of her two Ks, it's 2-0 Wolverines. Third inning, two on, one out. Sam Finley 
This ball leaves like it's late for dinner. Talk about getting out in a hurry. Finley pounds out her 10th homer of the year. Fourth inning, a new promotion to Alumni Field. Someone hits a grand slam in the fourth, a fan wins an Xbox. Well, the bases are loaded when Finley has the Xbox shot, her 11th homer of the year, and her first Xbox. I didn't know about the Xbox thing until I hit home plate, but I had been seeing the ball well this game, and it was, I don't even know if it was two and two or whatever, but I just knew that I had to battle off with two strikes, and anything she had, I was just hammering and going hard and attacking the pitch, and when it came, I just attacked it. Then I saw it, and then I smiled. <laughs> Finley had seven RBIs in the game. Next batter, Motika. Her eighth of the year, and the crowd wanted another Xbox. Of course, it's not a grand slam. Michigan wins, however, via the Mercy Rule 10 zip. We have power through the lineup, and um, that is the fun of it, that even your number eight hitter can pop it over the fence. And, um, you know, it's, it's a great thing to have. It's, it's a lot like having, I, I've said, it's like having the three-point shot in basketball. You've got to have some people that can, that can do that in your lineup. That's kind of where the game has evolved to. So um, definitely, we're good at it. I agree. Michigan has 55 home runs this season with 11 different Wolverines hitting at least one and five players have at least six with Jessica Merchant and Sam Finley leading the way with 11 apiece. We all trust each other and it's going to be somebody's day and we don't expect a home run but it happens and it's great to happen like it just, you just get so excited every time. It just kind of happens. We just go up there trying to make good contact and they just keep going out of the park. <laughs> so I, I don't really know what to tell you what the secret is. There you see the Big Ten standings. Again, lots of softball to be played. The Wolverines on the road at Wisconsin on Friday and Saturday. Then they have a doubleheader at Minnesota on Sunday. Where the University of Michigan softball team has sent a shockwave through college softball, becoming the first Northern school to get the nation's number one ranking. Well, the Wolverines took that ranking on the road. Big Ten play this weekend and started in Madison, Wisconsin, against the Badgers. First inning scoreless, the Badgers up. Chris Zacker, the little grounder. That's an E4. First of three Wolverine airs on the day. And the Badgers made him pay. Boo Gillette, deep and yard. Two unearned runs. It's 2 0 Badgers. Third inning, still two zip. Becky Marks for Michigan. Line shot to center field. Samantha Polito, nice Rob. It's still two zip. Same inning, it's 2 1 Wisconsin. When Jessica Merchant singles in Ali Giampolo, it's 2 2. And Ritter was great. She struck out nine and six and a third, gave up four hits and no earned runs. Bottom of the seventh, 2-2 game, one out. Wisconsin gets back-to-back -back base hits. This is the second one, and Hutch goes to the bullpen and brings in Laura Lynn Wilson. Two on, two outs, bottom of the seventh. Rebecca Million in left, running grab, and we go to extras. Eighth inning, one on and one out. Giampolo, the roller. Back-to-back -back Badger airs set the table for Sam Finley. Two on, two outs, 2-2. Two, two. Finley singles to left field. Haas scoots home, and it's 3-2 to two Michigan. Finley, the big hit. I hadn't been doing well the first couple at bats, and I went in there. Biggie talked to me and just said, see the ball relax and hit the ball, and I was just going in there, seeing the ball, hitting the, hitting the ball hard. I didn't really worry about where the game was on the line or who was on base. I just wanted to see the ball and hit it hard, and hopefully it went through. All right, for our viewers, who's Biggie? Biggie is our coach, Jennifer Brundage. In the bottom of the eighth with a 3-2 lead, Wilson was dealing. She struck out two to get the win. Now 16-2 and two on the year is Wilson. Michigan wins in comeback fashion, 3-2. We haven't played our A game in a while now, and we're still uh, coming out with victories. So um, I'm sick of saying this, sick of saying uh, we're not bringing our A game, but we definitely need to pick it up and make adjustments sooner and play better defense and we won't have to go eight innings. New brats. Oh, those are uh, pepper brats. Those are good. The Polish are going on right behind it. Those are the best, though. Okay, that right there is pretty much your cliche. The Badger fan. Talk about cheeseheads. 10 a.m. beers and brats. And there was softball. Second inning, Wilson pitching, getting help. The defense better Saturday. They commit no errors, and Wilson gave up just one hit. Third inning now, Carol Hutchins calls on a little hand job. Two on for Jessica Merchant. Merchant, her 14th of the year, and I think she's going to play on Sundays. It's three to nothing, Wolverines. Fourth inning, runners on second and third. Two outs for GM Polo. High fly ball gets up there on a very windy day. That'll go in the books as a double. Two run score. It's five nothing, Michigan. Next batter's Merchant, and Merchie singles to center field. 
Giampolo scores, 6-0 Michigan. Fifth inning, Wilson still dealing one of her eight Ks. Badgers had just two base runners in the game. Sixth inning, two on, two outs. Merchant pops one up into that wind, into the sun. It blows around and an error. Run scores at 7 nothing Wolverines. And the game ends right here. The grounder to the pitcher. Everyone safe. 8 nothing Mercy Rule win for the Wolverines. We had some adjustments to make, slower pitching this weekend, and uh, we finally made a couple of them. Still have a ways to go, but um, we look better today at the plate, so that's a good thing. We really have tried this year um, to make our focus be one game at a time, just kind of go out every game like it's just a new day, and you don't have to worry about what happened prior day or what might happen or any, any rankings or anything like that. Sunday, a doubleheader at Minnesota. Very nice facility. Third inning. This right here is scary. On the looper to shallow left, Million in left and Merchant, the All-American from short, both go down. And they are in some pain. And Hutch is scared. All Michigan softball fans scared, but both stayed in the game. Scoreless to the fourth inning. One on, two outs. Grace Lutelli muscles one out to left field. Michigan up 2-0. Lutelli's ninth bomb of the year. I was really mad that I left people on base my first at bat, which, you know, that's like the last thing you're supposed to do is carry your at bat with you. But I definitely did, and I was like, no matter what, I'm getting a hit. Like, I'm not leaving people on base. That's how I, that's what my thought process was. Still 2 nothing, sixth inning. This is Nicole Motika, and this one pretty much no doubt. Tiki's ninth of the year. She's now hitting 362. I have felt really relaxed at the plate, and um, it, really that's my job this year is just to hit the ball. And so knowing that, I just go up there relaxed and just kind of have fun because, you know, it's my last year and this is all there is. Seventh inning, Ritter again was brilliant. She struck out 14, gave up five hits. Jenny Ritter now 17-0 and on the year. Could have done a little better, I think. Um, Laurelin's getting better. I think we're both getting better and we're starting to get more adjusted to the Big Ten. Okay, game two of the doubleheader, bottom of the first scoreless, two on and one out, Sam Finley, the freshman, singles to left field, it's one nothing Michigan. Same inning, now 2 nothing. Lutelli, another single to left field, Finley rounding third, the throw to the plates, up the line, Finley safe, it's 3 to nothing. Second inning, bases loaded for Merchant, a single to center field, and when you add in this air, three runs score, it's 6 nothing Wolverines. And then Finley, launch, big old bowl of bean soup, She's got 12 home runs in her freshman season. She's going to hit like a million. It's 8-0 Michigan. Same inning. Hot hitting continues. Becky Marks singles to right field. Motika scores. It's 9-0. That's plenty for Wilson. She allowed only an infield leadoff single in the game that mowed him down. Five strikeouts for Wilson. Bottom of the third, Giampola goes the other way. Back and gone. It's 10-0 Michigan. The next batter is Merchant. Talk about having an All-American, All-World season. Her 15th bomb of the year, 11-0. That's your Mercy Rule final. You can have the ugliest swing, the ugliest defense, the ugliest everything, but if you're confident, you can, you can do it, like, no matter what. Like, you can hit home runs if you have the ugliest swing, and you can feel the ball if you have the ugliest form, as long as you're confident. I think it, it just means that people know we can play. We certainly have had a great season, and uh, whether we're one, two, three, four, five, you know, we are definitely one of the teams that is capable. And uh, the big key, though, is there's a number of teams that are capable. All right, stick with us because we got something for you, something else, another chapter in your book. Can you hang around? Sure. All right, coming up more here on Wolverine Sports Magazine, we'll take a look at maybe a new varsity sport at Michigan. With Minnesota, the Wolverines warm up, of course, with a little dodgeball. The coaches play, too, and, you know, these things can leave a weld. Of course, Jessica Merchant's great at this. This game's all about strategy. And, hey, when you're number one in the country, you can pretty much do whatever you want. So that's what the number one team does to relax before they play a Big Ten game. And, uh, Coach, where did the dodgeball idea come from? Well, we just been, uh, you know, there's just been, a, it's been, we're in the middle of the season. There's, the kids feel a lot of pressure. Um, you know, we're out there trying to win games, and um, we just were looking for a way to make sure that they were um, staying within themselves. And actually, Brundy's came up with the actual idea. We were trying to think of something we can do. Uh, we were going to look at their confidence. We were going to look at a few things. And finally, like, we just need to play and, and relax. And uh, the kids were excited about it. We brought them out after our, our workout uh, up in Madison, and we just put out some cones and brought out these funny balls that, that don't hurt you. And we had a couple matches there, and uh, the kids just loved it. Do you become a target for the kids? Do they want to get the coach? 
they got me pretty good, actually. Yeah, I would say I was probably one of their favorite targets. Well, the Minnesota kids were asking their coach, why can't we do that? And they said, hey, when you're number one, you can do that. So maybe you're starting a trend. Well, we're trying to definitely be the number one dodgeball team in the world. So um, definitely we'd like to get that ranking as well. All right. Take care, coach. Good luck. Thanks. All right. That's Carol Hutchins, the head coach of the Michigan softball program. Next week, we're on the road with softball at Indiana Purdue. Baseball highlights as well. They got to get it going down at Illinois against the Illini. That's next week here on Wolverine Sports Magazine. We'll have dodgeball highlights as well. We'll see you then. Wolverine Sports Magazine. Wolverine Sports Magazine. Rock Financial presents. All right, this is Alumni Field. It's not exactly where Ray Fisher Stadium is, just a stone throw from Ray Fisher Stadium, so you'd expect the climate to be very similar. For Saturday and Sunday, Wolverines lost a Saturday single game against Penn State and a doubleheader scheduled for national TV Sunday against Ohio State. Welcome back to Wolverine Sports Magazine. Michigan softball team number one in the nation. They did get one game in Friday night against the Nittany Lions. We're going to show you the entire Penn State first inning. One, two. Wolverine starter Jenny Ritter strikes out the side. She struck out nine in the game. Third inning for Penn State. Destiny Chavez at the plate. Little grounder, E6. Chavez is aboard. And she gets a second with two outs for Jenna Kunto. And Acunto will single to center field. Chavez will score. Giampolo's throw cut by Sam Finley. Acunto out at second, but it's one to nothing, Nittany Lions. Fourth inning, still one nothing. Wolverines threat. Two on for Nicole Motika. That little player's gonna drop. It's a double down the right field line. Merchant will score, and we're tied at one. This is hockey captain Eric Nystrom. Did you get it? Number one. Yeah, you're Number looking one. good. All right, second and third, two outs for Stephanie Burkhoff. She will strike out. The Wolverines leave nine runners on base. Seventh inning, still 1-1. This was kind of scary. A routine 1-3 put out, except that team home run leader, Sam Finley, goes down in a heap. After her ankle got rolled, she did, however, stay in the game. A pensive moment. Next batter's Holly Haynes for Penn State. Deep to left field, that ball is gone. 2-1 Penn State, that was the final. Number one, Michigan has played just seven home games, and they've lost two of them. It's been disappointing because being at home is what I look forward to and having our fans come out. And both home stands have not been the weather we've seen on the road because we were both in Minneapolis and Madison and down at Purdue and Indiana. We had 80-degree weather, and it was just fabulous. It's what the weather is meant to be for our sport to be played in. So. Again, um, there's nothing we can do about it. We can't control it, so we certainly can't dwell on it. The most important thing when you're in athletics, you just you deal with disappointment all the time. It's, it's how you respond to it. It's, it's going to be our charge. Is to, we have a challenge in front of us to get over this, uh, you know, get over the loss and get over the fact that we have snow on the ground right now. It's very disappointing, and, um, but it's our challenge, so we have to meet it. Explain to fans how the Big Ten works. They don't reschedule games, so Michigan plays one of four games this weekend. Why can that hurt you? It can hurt us because it's not a, just a one-loss record. It's a total percentage, and whatever the winning percentage is at the end will determine the champion. Division one program in the country. One of those championships has come on the softball field. That, however, could change this season, thanks in large part to a former Wayland Wildcat. Uh, number 24, Jessica Merchant. She is co-captain of the number one ranked women's college softball team in the nation. Jessica Merch is just a great individual and she's been such a great player for us. A four-year starter from Wayland, now leading the Wolverines there we go, Grace. into the final weeks of her senior season. I can't believe it went so fast. Um, I looked at the schedule the other day and my heart sank. I was like, oh my <laughs> gosh, we're almost done. But yeah, it's gone too fast. A leader in both the field and at the plate. She's just been such an asset to this Michigan program, and what I love about her is, is her love of the game and her love of Michigan. Already the Wolverines' all-time career home run leader, she is also the program's first ever All-American shortstop. I never really imagined it. I mean, I imagined coming in here and making an impact, but um, putting up some of the numbers I have so far, I never imagined that, never dreamed about that. Yet as a finalist for USA Softball Collegiate Player of the Year honors, there's always that Olympic dream. You know, that's a long shot, really. It's um, 
you never really know. I just love to play. Um, Ann Arbor is a great town. My teammates are amazing. Um, I wouldn't change anything for the world. Well, I'll be really shocked if she at some point in the near future doesn't get a good look from the Olympic uh, people. And while Jessica would love an opportunity to represent her country at the next Summer Olympic Games in Beijing, her only focus now is leading the Wolverines to the College Softball World Series in Oklahoma City this June. In Ann Arbor, Larry Figurski, 24-hour News 8. Western has had a great Big Ten softball season. The Wolverines have spent the vast majority of the Big Ten season in second place. Michigan taking on arch rival Michigan State last weekend over at Alumni Field. They set a record over 1,900 on hand, largest crowd ever at Alumni Field, and Michael Phelps throws out the first pitch, a changeup. He's going to swim on Sundays. First inning leadoff hitter is Tiffany Haas. Here's a little looper. That one's going to find some green, and nobody covers second. So what does Haas do? She sneaks on down there, making a double. Next batter, Ali Giampolo, the freshman, a more traditional double. Haas will score. Michigan's up one to nothing. Two batters later, it's Sam Bam Finley. Deep to center, back and It's a pretty nice catch out there. Giampolo tags and scores. It's 2-0 Michigan. Third inning, Haas. This ball started right over the left field line and stayed there, didn't hook at all. Number eight on the year for Haas, it's 3-0 Wolverines. Fourth inning, Jenny Ritter in the circle for Michigan. She was, well, dominant. She's 23 and one after this win, nine Ks. She allowed three Spartan hits. Bottom of the fourth, it's Stephanie Burkhaw up for Michigan. That's a two run shot, her fourth of the year, five nothing Wolverines. Spartans bring in a new pitcher. Next pitch, yep, back to back. Becky Marks, her fifth of the year, it's six nothing Wolverines. In the fifth, Jenny Ritter gets some help from her friends. With a runner on second, a line drive to Burkaw, and she'll double that runner up to end the MSU threat. Bottom five, 6 nothing, two aboard. Grace Lutelli singles to center field. Two run score, 8 nothing in the fifth to get the mercy rule win, and MSU's winning streak at Alumni Field comes to an end. Second game of the doubleheader, Wolverines and Spartans again. And pretty much we're used to this. Bad weather at Alumni Field. What else is new? Here comes the rain. The fans go scrambling. Two on, one out. Yeah, nice weather. Stephanie Burkaw will double home Finley and Lutelli to give Michigan the 2-0 rain-soaked lead. Third inning, 2-1. The base is juiced. One out. A single to center field. Two runs will score. Wolverines up 4-1. It's 5-1. Two batters later. Two on, two outs. Becky Marks. She'll double to left. Michigan on top, seven to one. Two batters later, Tiffany Haas. Make it eight to one on another. Single to left field, Wolverines out on top. In the fourth, here's Merchant. She's having a monster year. Her 17th home run, 50 RBIs, and the Wolverines on top, 9-1. MSU had taken five of six over Michigan, but that's over. Two games, two five-inning wins, over the Spartans. Hutch came in before the games and gave us a little pep talk and uh, told us to be aggressive, swing at first strikes, no let up, and we did. It was intense. Everyone was out there ready to go. I've never seen us so pumped up. And Hutch, I've never seen Hutch so pumped up. And we were, there was no way we were losing those games. I know that for sure. I really wanted us to come out to play, and I basically told them that this is this is how you're going to win. You're going to be aggressive. You're going to come out swinging, and um, they did. They did. They executed the game plan, and they were ready to play. And, and that's the most important thing is because when they're ready to play, they're an awful good team. It's two mercy send the message that we're playing some good ball, that we're hitting the ball hard, playing good defense. Our pitching was on today. Um, the intensity level today was um, a new high for Michigan softball. Um, I've never felt intensity like that on any team here. You know, a lot of us are saying, we're back. <laughs> you know, I think um, we, we're just more prepared. And I think we're having fun and we're ready to play. And we take it one game at a time. Definitely one game at a time. Home of the University of Michigan softball program. That's the top ranked University of Michigan softball program. Wolverines clinched the Big Ten regular season championship last weekend with a sweep of Northwestern. Michigan will now host the Big Ten tournament right here at Alumni Field this coming weekend. Wolverines got it underway against Northwestern. Michigan needs a sweep of the Wildcats to get the regular season title, and it all started Saturday night. 
A near record crowd scoreless in the third. Eileen Canny dominating for Northwestern. She had five Ks through three. In the fourth, the Cats Garland Cooper. One of the few to touch Jenny Ritter early, but this drive tracked down by Ali Giampolo. We'd stay scoreless to the fifth. In the fifth, Stephanie Burkaw on first for Michigan. One out. Becky Marks at the plate. Canny, the throwing air. Costly as Burkaw will score all the way from first in Michigan. Next batter, Rebecca Milliam. This is a close play at first. Remember, a tie goes to runner, but this is no tie. The ball's way over there, and the foot's on the bag. Bonnie Thole, Michigan assistant coach. Hey, how you doing? Uh, listen, about that call. We moved to the six. GM Polo was two for three and named Big Ten Player of the Week. That single set the table for All-American Jessica Merchant. And Merchant launches a rocket. GM Polo will score all the way from first. Merchant would later score on a wild pitch. Michigan takes a 3-0 lead. To the seventh, Jenny Ritter slammed the door. She had nine Ks, a two-hitter. She's 26-1 and one. as Michigan wins the opener. 3 zip. So that went on Saturday night, set up the showdown. Winner take all, battle for all the Chutney in the Big Ten, Michigan and Northwestern, Sunday afternoon, Alumni Field. It was senior day, final home game, regular season, and that means you get a hat. And you get to play some softball. First inning, second and third, two outs. Nicole Motika for Michigan. Courtney Foster struck her out. Northwestern got out of the jam. Second inning, it's 1-0 Northwestern. Leading off the inning, Sheila McCorkle corks one. Solo shot. That led off the inning and gave the Wildcats a 2-0 lead. Third inning, no hits for Michigan until Rebecca Millian drops down this. Look at first. Oh, there's some contact there. No flag on the play. A million was perched on first for Gian Polo, the freshman. Deep to right field and give her a big old bowl of bean soup just barely. She doinks it off the top of the wall, her sixth of the game, and it ties the game at two. It was definitely a pitch I probably shouldn't have swung at because it was high and inside. My heart stopped. It was like the best feeling I've ever had. You ever hit one off that uh, that yellow piping during practice? No, actually, I I meant to do that really because <laughs> I wanted everyone to really watch it go over. Okay, bottom three, two-two game with two on. Jamie Dotson will single in a run to make it three-two. Northwestern on a sack fly would make it four-two. In the fifth inning, still four-two on a relief for Michigan. Laura Lynn Wilson, she had a couple of Ks, was very good, and got some help from her friends like this ball ticketed for center field. Merchant laying out thievery. The Cats took a 4-2 lead to the sixth. So Michigan down two runs with two outs in the sixth. 4-2 Cats with Burke on first. Million beats out the infield single and Burke sneaks over to third. So the bottom of the order sets the table for the top with two outs. Tiffany Haas, her first hit of the weekend's a double. It's 4-3. Here comes the tying run. Million safe at the plate. It's 4-4. So two outs still for Giampolo and Haas on base. And Giampolo, her third RBI of the game as Haas will score. Michigan takes the lead, 5-4. Next batter, Jessica Merchant. Remember, Canny made that throwing error on Saturday. Here she goes underhand. Merchant safe. Inning still going on. Michigan leading, 5-4. Sam Bam Finley, the next batter, drives one to center field. One run will score, makes it 6-4. Merchant going for home. Throw to the plate, not in time, 7-4. All this with two outs in the inning. Next batter, Motika, singles up the middle. Finley scores. Michigan scores six runs in the inning, all with two outs. But Northwestern's not going quietly. With two aboard, McCorkle, her second home run of the game. This a 3-1 blast. Michigan leads 8-7. The epic continues into the seventh. Ritter. Back in, faces the top of the order. First out via the K. Number two hitter, Aaron Mobley. Two outs. Here comes Garland Cooper, the big bat in the cat lineup. Merchant gloves it. She's got it. Ball game. Big 10 title to Ann Arbor. 8-7 in dramatic fashion. Carol Hutchins, her 10th Big 10 title. This is just the start, right? You got the best coaching staff possible. You're great. You showed a lot of heart. You showed a lot of excitement. And go blue. Yeah! Couldn't ask for anything better. Um, coming this weekend, I was so fired up. We played at 6 o'clock last night. I wandered around town all day. Like, when can we play? When can we play? Um, it was absolutely amazing. Um, probably the most memorable game on alumni field right there. Um, hopefully, we'll have a few more, more memorable this season. But 
Absolutely amazing. Did it get any better than this last day of the regular season, your home field and winning what was a classic game? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. This is probably the most intense game I've ever been in. <laughs> I was all fired up. Like, Ritter's had to relieve me several times, so I made a decision. I was like, it's my turn to come in and help her out. And then she came back and helped you out, yeah, too. Teamwork makes the dream work. <laughs> That's all I can say. Becky Marks and I have been saying all week that we found a quote that said, it's the bottom of the order that wins championships, because the top of the order always shows up. So we were like, so we have to show up to win this. And so that was our plan all along. We were like, we have to do it to get it started. This is what our team needed to prove that we can do this in clutch situations and that we have what it takes to go far into the season. And we're joined right now by the head coach of the Wolverines, Carol Hutchins, another Big Ten title, but this one's a little different. This game was unreal. Compare this to any of your 902 victories at Michigan. Well, it, it was. I knew it was going to be an exciting weekend. We never have had a weekend with Northwestern in the last four years that hasn't been wild. And yesterday was kind of a sedate game, and I wasn't surprised at all that this was a whole different temple. Um, give both teams credit because they came back, we came back, you know, and I felt we stayed really even keel. Uh, we didn't get too down when we were behind. We were down to six outs left. Um, and we just needed to get base runners on base. And when we did, we got some key hits. And, uh, you know, it still comes down to uh, Jenny Ritter shut him down in the last inning. That was huge. And, oh, by the way, your kids continue to just handle all the distractions of being number one in the country. It doesn't mean anything to them. That's good because it doesn't mean anything until some time in June. And I think they really have bought into that. They've been sitting at the one spot for a while. Um, it's not going to get any easier. I thought coming out today was really important. Um, you have to beat a, t a team like this twice to get to the World Series. And no matter what, I maintain getting to the series is every bit as difficult as ever. I think this is the most difficult year of all. Um, you've got to beat a good team twice, and we just beat a good team twice. Coach, congratulations. Thank Best you. of luck. Thank you. Magazine. And it is postseason time for the Michigan baseball and softball programs. We start our show this week with softball, nation's top ranked Wolverines. They've advanced in the NCAA tournament to the Super Regionals, where they'll host 16th ranked Washington this coming weekend in a best of three series for the right to advance to the College World Series. Michigan got to the Super Regionals by sweeping through their own regional, and it started last Friday against Canisius. All right, Wolverine leadoff hitter Tiffany Haas. She went two for four in the ball game, and this put a duck on the pond for Sam Bam Finley. Bam. With two outs, a two-run shot, her 19th homer of the season, now 63 RBIs on the year for Sam Bam. It's 2-0 Michigan. Second inning, Jenny Ritter pitching for the Wolverines. She struck out five of the first six. She was dialed in early on. In the fourth inning, leading off, Jessica Merchant. Michigan is homered in 52 of 60 games on the year. That's 20 home runs for Murchie. It's three to nothing, Michigan. Same inning, bases loaded, two outs. Look at this, off the third baseman's glove, the shortstop back to third. That's a bang, bang play, but Burkhoff safe, run scores, four nothing. In the fifth, second and third, nobody out. Sam Finley singles up the middle, two runs will score. Wolverines on top, six to nothing. Now with one out, runner on second, Grace Lutelli singles to center field. Sam Bam being waved home, play at the plate. She would score. It's 7-0 Wolverines. You don't see a lot of double plays in softball. Here's a 5-4-3 for the Wolverines, just their sixth DP of the year. Look at the snow cone at the end. Finley just got it. The Wolverines would take a 7-1 lead into the bottom of the sixth when Nicole Motika finds some green here. Tiffany Haas will score. 8-1, Michigan advances past Canisius in round one. Saturday, the Wolverines draw Seton Hall. The Merchant fans, well, Merchant did not hit that target, but in the first, two outs, nobody on. Merchant hits a towering drive to left. Her 21st bomb of the year, it's one to nothing, Michigan. Second inning, leading off, Nicole Motika. Give her a big old bowl of bean soup. Number 12 for Tiki, 2 nothing Michigan on two solo home runs. Two outs in the fifth now. Burkaw on second. Tiffany Haas, line shot, center field. Burkaw will round third, play at the plate. She would score, and the Wolverines up 3 to nothing. Next batter, Allie Giampolo. She went two for four. This single to center. Haas being waved around third. Another play at the plate. 
Haas is safe. It's 4-0 Wolverines. Same inning. Two on, two out. Sam Finley singles to left. Giampolo being waved around third. Another play at the plate. She would score. It's 5-0. We move ahead, seventh inning. Ritter went the distance for Michigan. She had nine Ks, now 321 career strikeouts, a single season record, three hits, no walks. She's now 30-1 and one on the year, and that's not bad. Sunday, North Carolina has to beat Michigan twice. Wolverines need just one win in the second with the bases loaded. Becky Marks singles to right. Finley scores all the way from third. Tiki scores from second. It's two to nothing. Now Haas up, still loaded, one out. Fly ball, center field, Burkaw at third, tagging. Play at the plate, and Burkaw would score. It's three to nothing, Wolverines. In the fourth, this is Ritter, dialed in. She struck out the side. She had 10 Ks. 10 strikeouts, that is, through five innings, one hit, no walks. Two on, one out in the fifth. Sam Finley uncorks her 20th home run of the year. The freshman, remember the single season record had been 15 bombs. That makes it six to nothing, Wolverines. In the seventh, Laura Lynn Wilson closed it out. She went two innings, struck out two. Michigan wins the regional. On the weekend, Michigan gave up just nine hits and made no errors. I think our defense and pitching is getting better and better. I think uh, Ritter got better every game this weekend, and that's all you can ask for going in the Super Regionals, um, to bring your best defense, and I think that's what we're doing right now. You played behind some great pitchers at Michigan, and Barta and Young, and now is there anybody better than Ritter? Um, you know, I don't think so. I mean, Ritter's doing great. Um, I wouldn't want any other pitcher in the country on my mound right now. You've taken a lot of great pitchers deep into the NCAA tournament. How do you feel about Jenny Ritter right now? Well, I'll tell you right now, I, I am so pleased with Jenny Ritter. I am most pleased with just what she's done with herself, her mindset, her mental game. I mean, her improvement, I've said it before, has been with her approach to the game, and her pitch-to-pitch -pitch consistency has been outstanding. That's a focus issue, and that is a maturity thing. And uh, I am very pleased with what she's doing for this team because she's keeping us in every game. Bottom of the order produced again. Burkhart, Marks, and Million went seven for 22, scored five runs, and drove in four. And this team, they've been number one for three months, and they've excelled, going 31 and three since ascending to the nation's top spot, staying relaxed and focused. Who's this team taking their cues from? If they have any other approach than mine, that's it for them. It's my approach. You know, that's the way it is. But I believe that they understand that and believe it. Uh, but. Um, you know, I think they all just buy into it, and that's the key. There's just a, you know, a sense of, um, you know, this is what we want to do, and we know how to do it. Um, we just go out here and do what we do every day, regardless of who we're playing, what's on the line. Um, you know, as long as we keep playing our game, uh, things, sh things should go well for us. They know that the national champion is going to be determined on the field. Polls are nothing, and I love their approach. They're very unassuming, and they have two games left in their season. They have to fight for anything else, and so far, I'm pleased.